Hi sisters, James Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Whenever you guys are watching my makeup videos, you know, obviously as an artist myself, I try to use the best of the best products to come up with the best of the best looks. However, in today's YouTube video, we're gonna be doing quite uh, the opposite. A few days ago, I was opening up some new PR packages and I opened a box from a specific brand with a new mascara on it. And on the package, I noticed that it said number one rated. Number one victory royale. And it really got me thinking like, who, who gave you this title? Who told you that this mascara was number one? Did you decide that this mascara was number one? I'm sure you did. Did one beauty guru on YouTube give you this title? Or is there like a, a makeup focus group that we don't know about that is sitting here like ranking products from best to worst? I'm saying this because I was thinking to myself, if there's like a number one, number one rated mascara or foundation or concealer, there's gotta be a worst rated version of each product as well. So I figured in today's video, I really wanted to challenge myself and see if I could do a full face of makeup using the worst rated products on the market. Just two super quick things before we jump into today's video as well. Just wanted to clarify a little bit. These products that I have here in front of me are not necessarily what I would consider the worst rated products. These are what the internet says are the worst rated products based on different blogs, different articles, different magazines and everything. So once again, not sure who's making these decisions, but uh, in this case, it was not me. Second of all, I know that you guys love, love, love a makeup challenge. You guys love seeing me fail. You love seeing me struggle. So if you guys are excited for this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up right now to show your love and support. It helps me out quite a lot and without further do, let's just jump into this full face of the worst rated makeup products. For foundations today, I actually have two different options that a lot of different websites said were the worst. One is the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Illuminating Tinted Moisturizer. This one I'm not really surprised by just because Neutrogena is obviously known for like skincare and removing makeup. And then this one is the Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse. Now, this has been around for quite a long time, I think. If I'm thinking about my makeup history correctly, I think like my mom had this in her kit when she was like younger. Like I feel like this has been around for a very long time now and I know that a lot of people used to really love this so I'm actually shocked to see that it's now in the worst rated list. I think out of these two products today I'm gonna go ahead and try out the Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse Foundation just because I want a little bit more of full coverage. Let's jump in. Yeah, and you're 25. Yeah. So it's this has been around for a, a minute. <laughs> I'm not, oh my god. Oh my god. No. Wait, I'm so excited to watch you try this. Let's go ahead and open it up and see. Ew! Yeah. Oh, it's a, okay. I guess it really is moussey. Okay, yeah, I definitely want to use a sponge. That was a mistake. Hold on, let me wet a beauty blender quickly. The texture of this is, yeah. okay, wow. Oh, why is it doing that? It's like clay. It's like a, ew! Oh my God! What, what is this made out of? You know, obviously some people are gonna like certain products more than others just based on, you know, what your preferences are in terms of skin tones lightweight, heavy coverage and stuff. But like, even when it comes to products that I don't necessarily like love, I can usually make them work with the right tools, the right amount of blending, or just like fixing things up. Like this is actually really, really bad. It doesn't look that bad on camera. I will say now that I've been able to blend it in, but that was definitely the grossest, most unpleasant foundation experience I've ever had. Okay, so the next step in our routine is going to be our concealer. Now this is from the brand Physicians Formula, which I'm actually shocked to see on this list. Physicians Formula has some really, really great drugstore products, especially their bronzers are amazing. This is one of the worst rated things ever. Really? 3.2 out of 10. I love those applicators. Yeah. You do? I know you eat them, but I love them. They're just, I think that they're very unsanitary. That's fine. <gasps> okay, I got it. Let's really see what this looks like. So I guess I'm just like using this to like blend it out, which is kind of gross if you really think about it. Now let's go ahead and blend this concealer out. I mean, I will say it's blending pretty nicely. Ooh, it, it really does smell like sunscreen. I don't think that this one's that bad. Out of 10, I'm, I'm gonna rate this like a four, five. <laughs> Now that we have our foundation and concealer on, it is time for our powder. Now for powder today, we have 
only one option. This is the e.l.f. Perfect Finish HD Powder. Now, I love e.l.f. They have some really, really good products. Obviously, a few days ago, we just uploaded our Chipotle X e.l.f. review. If you guys have not watched that video yet, go ahead and click right up here. But anytime that a powder says HD in it, there lies some problems with it. That is because when you use HD powders, you really have to use like the absolute most minimal amount because they're meant for camera. However, it is this type of powder that led to Miss Flashback Mary being born. Waking up in the morning, thinking about so many things. And still to this day, I avoid these at all costs because they are just way too, honestly complicated to use for the everyday makeup consumer. Just to dip a little brush in here and see how it's gonna work. Like I just can't use a product where I have to like literally dip once with a brush in and like stipple so lightly like, oh my skin looks repulsive. I'm gonna try to insert a picture of my skin just so you guys can actually see how bad it looks. Obviously I love my camera and lighting setup because it makes me look beautiful for my YouTube videos. But in situations like this, it's once again making me look good when in reality my skin looks quite the opposite, so. <laughs> look at this. Work. <laughs> Porous is definitely a good word to use there. All right, you guys, so for the next step, we need to add some bronzer and this one from Maybelline, which I'm surprised. Maybelline honestly has some really, really bomb products. So I'm shocked that this one would end up here, but we're gonna test it out and really see why. Okay, just gonna grab my little fluffy brush and dip into contour number one. Yeah, it's not, it's looking fine to be honest. You know what I'm just realizing? This is number 20, medium to deep for contouring. And it's really showing up on my skin tone. Medium to deep? Uh-uh, uh-uh. Maybe now I get why this is rated poorly because it's not its not like actually looking that well. Well. Oops. Oh, not over the new Nike jacket. Like that line is the harshest yeah. nose contour I've ever seen. The problem is I'm literally blending this contour color out and it's taking off the awful foundation underneath. Oh my. Okay, so I started off not really hating this contour and I I was lying to myself. This one, this one's bad. I'm gonna give this one a solid three out of 10. The formula is just really patchy and it's taking off the product from underneath. It's too warm tone and the nerve of the brand to call this medium, brave, honestly, brave. Um, We're gonna do some blush. Now, this is the e.l.f. Monochromatic Multi-Stick and Glistening Peach. And apparently this is poorly rated. Personally, I love a cream blush. I don't use it all the time in my makeup looks just because I tend to go for something a little bit more full coverage, but whenever I'm doing like a more natural everyday type of moment, love these. So we're gonna try this out and see. Let's do a little swatchy, watchy woo and see what she looks like. I mean, I don't really see like that much wrong with this. Oh, so that doesn't exist. <laughs> um, hello? Why is this so shiny? Wait, what did the packaging say? Use this shimmery, luxurious, blendable creamed powder stick as your eyeshadow, lipstick, and blush. It's also blendable. <laughs> blendable is a little bit of a stretch. Let me grab some directly on my actual like beauty sponge and see if that helps at all. It's literally just blending out to like nothing. Like there's nothing there. It, like, it, I'm just confused as to what this product is trying to be. There's no pigment in this, really, at all. So this could not be a, a eyeshadow color or a blush. And it's not nearly shimmery enough to actually be a pretty highlighter either. Like, I'm gonna rate this one a two out of 10. It doesn't really have much pigment, so it's not an actual blush. It doesn't have much shimmer, so it's not really a highlighter. It's, it's, it's just a no from me. And now I really wanna move on to the next step. This next product I am truly shocked to see in this list. And that is this NARS highlighting powder. NARS is like one of the, in my opinion, one of the best makeup brands. They are super, super inclusive. They have tons of different formulas, tons of different products that are like cult classic favorites. So the fact that this is in here is shocking. Uh, this is in the shade Albatross. It's very light. Like, whoa. Whoa, that's like a 
I mean, th th this looks fine to me. Because of the fact that my skin tone is obviously a lot lighter, this product is looking fine. However, anybody with a skin tone even remotely darker than mine would have a, probably a really gray undertone underneath this, which would not look flattering. I'm gonna go ahead and give this NARS highlighter a seven out of 10. It's not my personal favorite. I definitely wouldn't reach for it all the time. I've definitely tried quite a few highlighters that are way, way worse than this. So yeah, I guess that's why we're here to test these out today though for this video. So let's move on to the next step. It is obviously now time to move on to eyebrows, which is always a little bit of a sore subject for me. Your brows are like way too thick and I don't like that they don't have an arch. We're gonna be using the Wet n Wild Brow Sessive Brow Pencil. It's literally just like an old vintage looking brow pencil. So the packaging, it just broke because I pulled it out of the package. Um, let's just put it back together and pretend that didn't happen. It does have a spoolie on one end, so that's at least good. Oh, wow. This is sharp. Oh my God, ouch. The actual like pencil formula is so hard that it's like cutting my face. I feel like brow, brow pencils are usually like a really kind of creamy. For being such a hard pencil, it's really not very pigmented either. Like I'm really digging in here to try to get some color out, which in turn is hurting my skin and it's still looking pretty bland. I think the color actually looks really, really good for my hair color. Like it's a good match. And I was able to get a pretty precise brow with this pencil, especially having the spoolie on one end. Like, I don't think that this is that bad. I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. Time to move on to my favorite part of the makeup routine. You guys know is of course always going to be eyeshadow. Love doing a bright, colorful look. And today's palette of choice is going to be no exception. Uh, I'm going to pick up the Rimmel London Magnifies Thunderstorm Edition eyeshadow palette. This might honestly be the ugliest color combination I may have ever seen in my entire life. This is hideous. I want to swatch this yellow and see what she looks like. That might be the worst eyeshadow that I've ever tried. Oh, the green, okay. The green is good. The green isn't bad at all, but everything else, good Lord. I definitely think a thunderstorm look is the right, the way to go. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of this nice little, just, um, I think it's supposed to be like a dark purpley color, kind of ish a little bit. What? what? How? Yeah. I used this color, not this one, this one. Hello? I wanted like a deep purple. I'm next gonna grab a little bit of this Tsunami color. Okay, now we're just gonna blend this, what I thought was purple out with this blue. It, the colors are so unpigmented, it's like sad. I love that I'm like all sad and shocked when I'm literally using the palette that's supposed to be the worst on the market. I mean, I feel like that's like the best that it's gonna look to be completely honest. A nice little bolt, a nice little strike of lightning. I'm gonna name this one Strike. I'm gonna put this right into the inner corner. Should I do green in the lo in the lash or the on the bottom? I mean, I think it's only fair. Surprised by this green. This is a pretty good matte green, to be completely honest. I can't knock it. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other eyeshadow off camera, and I'll be right back to finish off the rest of the eyes. <laughs> <sighs> So this eyeshadow look is done and it's probably the ugliest eyeshadow that I've ever, ever had on. I understand why uh, Miss Rimmel London is the worst rated eyeshadows because this is this this is not a palette that I would ever even look at again. It is time to move on to our eyelashes. Our next step is going to be these magnetic eyelashes. I hate these. I think these are so, so stupid. They are such a scam. Oh my God. This. Uh. <laughs> This, this brand is a magnetic lash eyeliner. So I think that you put this eyeliner onto your like lash line and like draw it on like a normal wing. And then the lashes are supposed to like magnetize to the eyeliner. Something about that seems not safe. Let's try to do a little, little wing here. So my little wingy is on there. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and just Yes. Well, kind of. I mean, it is, it's, it's on there. This might be the ugliest lash that I've ever tried, but. Oh, wow. You can literally rip it off and 
one second flaw. Imagine you're like, just like walking by something metal that all of a sudden your lash just flies off your face and like lands on your refrigerator. Let's go ahead and do the other one and just finish off the rest of this look and give our final thoughts because we're so close. This is gonna be a solid like three out of 10 for me just because the technology in theory is really cool. However, the magnet is just not very strong. Three out of 10 and let's move on to the last and final. Thank God, step of this routine. Oh, hey, you guys. So our last and final step is going to be our lipstick. Now, uh, according to, you know, the worst rated list, there was one product that kept showing up over and over and over again, and that is this Buxom Full Force Plumping Lipstick. Packaging is actually really pretty. If we open it up, it looks like this. Have you used this before? Yes, James. In my free time, I decided to use it before we started filming. Has somebody used this before? Nobody. This, this fully looks like this has been applied on a human being. Oh, you can't even, it doesn't even look like it on camera. Lips. Anthony, it literally looks like somebody used this before. I wanna see. Whoa. <laughs> this color is hideous, first of all. I should have put on a lip liner beforehand, but to be fair, there weren't any worse rated lip liners to try in this routine today. I'm starting to feel the the plumping sensation that they're claiming is supposed to be happening here on the box. This is this is the least plumping, tingling, plumping, tingly feeling that I've ever experienced. Did you just glitch? No, it's it's the least plumping, tingling, plumping, tingling sensation that I've ever felt. It's not doing anything is the point. Like this, it just feels like a normal lipstick that's a really gross color and formula, to be honest. I would rate this like a five out of 10. It's not like the formula is like bad, but it's definitely not making my lips actually plump or Tingle. <laughs> plumping and tingling, plumping and tingling, plumping and tingling. Plumping and tingling. Am I done? Do I have anything left? As I'm sure you can tell from this final look and also my mood, this was not fine. Majority of these products today did live up to their expectation and ratings of being pretty bad. I think that uh, I have definitely had enough and I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching me try out these products today and learned a little bit more about them. I really want you guys to leave me a comment down below as well and let me know what is the worst makeup product that you've ever tried. All that being said, if you guys enjoyed today's video and you've loved watching me struggle, as I know you guys always do, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up down below to show your love and support. Also click that bigger subscribe button to come join the sisterhood. And finally click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you'd like to follow me on my makeup journey, all my social media accounts will be linked right here around the screen. And if you guys want to text me on my personal phone number for updates on videos, photos, merch, and so much more, my number is 310-905-8746. This video's sister shout out goes to sister Talia. Thank you so much love for always following and supporting. I love you so, so, so much. And if you'd like to do the next video's sister shout out, don't forget to always retweet me the links so they go live on Twitter. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video today. If you've made it through this far, you are the best. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.